Super Rugby Aotearoa team of the week for round number six. Where the Crusaders actually had a loss. Unbelievable. They don't dominate the team of the week. Unbelievable. Blues and Hurricanes kind of fought out. At times, what was a pretty hard watch, to be honest. I don't think either of the games exactly exemplified everything that's great about Super Rugby Aotearoa. At least the Crusaders and Highlanders one had a bit of oomph about it in terms of the Crusaders. I don't know, seemingly not hitting their straps and the Highlanders playing really well. And you could just see the feeling in them at the end of that game, which made it all, you know, all worth the while. Whereas at the end of the Blues and Hurricanes one, your kind of main talking points were the ref, which is not what you want. But anyway, I'll not faff on about that stuff. Uh, we'll talk about 15 pretty good players from the weekend and you guys can let me know your thoughts on, um, on which guys you guys thought performed well. Uh, I have gone with a couple of Highlanders uh, in the front row in terms of Ethan de Groot. I'm not sure if he pronounces it de Groot or is there a huh sound down there, but either way, de Groot and Tokolahi. Um, I thought they both performed pretty well up against what's a very, very solid Crusaders pack. Neither of them got any tries, neither of them got any try assists. The group had four runs for not many meters, as most members of the front row club should kind of be doing. Um, what's his name? Taniela Tupo could be taking lessons after his kind of diving try in his match in Super Rugby AU. But anyway, uh, no clean breaks, no defenders beaten. But what he does have is some pretty strong scrummaging up against an all black and partially Samoan international front row. Concedes two penalties, which is pretty much the same as all the other props, except for Tokolahi, you would have conceded one. Seven from seven tackles. Essentially, if you want to be a prop in the team of the week, solid scrummaging and good defensive work are probably the two main prerequisites. You can maybe get away with some of the flashy stuff from time to time, though, as well, but you don't need it. It's kind of a secondary element. Uh, Tokolahi, like I mentioned, uh, three runs for three meters is also really prop-like. Uh, no clean breaks, no defenders beaten. Two passes, so that's more than De Groot had. Uh, seven from eight tackles. Um, doesn't cough the pill up and only concedes one penalty. So, yeah, it's kind of an area where I expected the Crusaders to really dominate, but it didn't quite end up happening. However, uh, Cody Taylor, I think, still continues to perform at a level that none of the other hookers in New Zealand are quite yet at. I know Dane Coles is back from injury. Uh, Osof Amua has gone off injured for a while. Um, so yeah, there's other guys around. Uh, Tokiaho for the Chiefs has been pretty good. Obviously, they didn't play this week. But um, yeah, I still think Cody Taylor is just the best of the bunch. So he gets a try, which he's liked to do recently. Uh, six runs for 38 meters is always a very good return. He is quick for a man his size. Uh, he has a clean break. He has one pass. 16 out of 16 tackles is also a hell of a shift. So I'll give credit to him for that. It's not all about the kind of fancy stuff. He does concede one penalty, but the Crusaders lineup operates at 100%. Not much more you could ask for from him, even if his team kind of didn't um, put on the full performance this weekend. Uh, locks, I have gone with Sam Whitelock as one, and he's a bit of a... A regular in my teams of the week, man. It's hard not to pick the guy. Now, he doesn't score any tries or try assists. He still gets 18 runs. Sorry, 18 run meters uh, from seven runs. He gets a clean break. He get, beats two defenders, four passes. So involvement levels are still high. And again, it's a question that you start to ask about guys who get into that, you know, 30 plus age bracket, but he doesn't seem to be slowing down. 17 out of 18 tackles is also a phenomenal shift. Uh, he does concede one turnover and has, I think, three line-out wins from memory. I didn't write it down, but yeah, the guy is still really going strong. And another guy who um, is doing pretty well on his return, hasn't been back that long, Putty Putty Parkinson, is maybe a future... Uh, I don't know. We'll see how he goes at international level. He's got to get his Super Rugby stuff sorted first. But I thought he had a pretty good game. Uh, again, no tries, no try assists. But he gets 18 run meters from 10 runs. So very busy around the park. Not afraid to take the ball into contact. 
Uh, two passes, both of which seem to be offloads, which is mad. Uh, eight from eight tackles. Line out work. I think he has a couple of line out wins as well. I don't think no, nobody stole any Crusaders line out ball, but um, Parkinson just looks good. And I'm so glad that the Highlanders have locked him into a, a longer contract because the locking stocks beyond the likes of Scott Barrett, Sam Whitelock, um, maybe Patrick Tupulotu, or Talek if he comes back, are not kind of that. The Chiefs have got some young guys coming through. There's like a bit of a gap between. The, the prospects and the, the top guys at the moment. So, yeah, Parkinson's another one that can maybe close that gap, given a bit of time. Uh, loose forwards, I have gone with another Highlander. There's going to be a few of them. Uh, Shannon Frizzell. Frizzell? Frizzell just continues to impress, man. I know he didn't exactly have the most stellar time of it when he was with the, uh, when he was with the All Blacks at the end of last year. Kind of wasn't really able to... To dominate games like we've kind of um, gotten used to seeing him at Super Rugby level. Uh, and he hasn't scored any tries or anything this week. But he still makes uh, 14 carries. 22 meters. I mean, by his own standards, he's probably a little bit disappointed he didn't get a higher number of meters per carry. In terms of his carrying this uh, this week. He has two passes. Defensive shift with 9 from 9 tackles. Uh, doesn't concede any penalties. No turnovers conceded. So... Overall, I still think he's been a bit of a good influence. His trajectory at the moment seems to be positive, whereas Akira Ioane hasn't quite hit those same, apart from the opening couple of rounds, hasn't quite hit those same levels this season. But anyway, we've still got time. We'll see how things go. Uh, who else have we got? I went with another. Man, goodness me. I didn't only pick... Islanders guys, but goal oh, Billy Harmon, former Crusader. He did end up scoring a try, so good on him. He would have enjoyed that, you know, having left the Crusaders, probably knowing his minutes were going to be numbered amongst all those talented Lucys they've got. Uh, he has eight runs for 14 meters, which is another one that's not that flash. Like, it's still busy. It's not like exactly tearing it up. Um, he has four passes, doesn't offload, but makes 10 from 11 tackles. Does concede two turnovers, but... Just made himself a bit of a nuisance. Very busy Highlanders back row. And I'm sure he's loving uh, loving getting all those minutes. And uh, the last one I put down. I didn't really pick a proper, proper number 8 this week. I put Dalton Papali'i. So I got two number 7s in, man. Because Papali'i and Harmon were both really good. Papali'i, I think, in terms of All Blacks prospects. Especially with Sam Kane being injured. He is putting his hand up really well his work at the breakdown has been phenomenal man he's been a real pest he's making people's lives miserable getting the blues out of some serious trouble uh doesn't get any tries or try assists but has two runs for 30 meters which in terms of your work rate you might say is low but your return on what he gives you is really high 15 runs uh, meters per, you know, per carry uh he has a clean break beats a defender passes twice offloads once uh, 15 from 15 tackles, and that's mostly what he's giving you. He's giving you a ton of defense, and he's giving you a real threat at the breakdown. So, uh, Dalton Papali for me. Into the backs. Uh, halfback, probably only one choice, and that was Falau Fakatava. Speaking of guys who can be a nuisance at the breakdown, who knew this guy was such a threat? Uh, really committed to a side. He's another guy who signed a bit of a contract extension, which is great to see for the Highlanders. It's good to see guys really locking in. They, they must be loving it down there under Tony Brown for these guys to be willing to commit. Especially when, I mean, with Fakatava, he could have arguably decided, you know, I want to go to a place where I'm going to be the out-and-out -out number one guy. I don't want to be playing kind of a tandem role with Aaron Smith. But maybe it's working for him. Maybe having that mentor there and getting the minutes as well is actually working. Uh, he doesn't get a try or a try assist, but he has five runs for five meters um, he doesn't get any clean breaks, but he has two defenders beaten, 64 passes and an offload, four tackles made, three missed is not the greatest return, uh, turnovers conceded is one. So when you look at the stats, doesn't show anything that flash, but I think his creativity, his speed, and his defensive work at the breakdown, honestly, is amazing. Totally got the Highlanders out of trouble. So yeah, pretty happy with, uh, with Flau Fakatawa. And man, the Highlanders run, geez, I haven't actually counted how many I went with. But the Highlanders run here just seems to be going on. 
Mitch Hunt, I think, is probably the player of the week. And I know it's easy to pick a first five for that because they do what they do with ball in hand. So they're a lot more obvious than anyone else. But man, he was just everywhere. Um, Mitch Hunt finishes with four penalties. He has three conversions. He has uh, 12 runs for 110 uh, run meters, which is a um, just quite, that's a very good return. Uh, he has three defenders beaten. He has three clean breaks, 20 passes. Uh, he makes two tackles and misses three, which is a black mark if you were looking for one. But man, the guy was everywhere. Kicking as well. I mean, that's not reflected in the stats, but he was absolutely putting the Crusaders guys on the back foot, trying to catch guys like Jordan and Bridge and whatnot, out, either out of position or make them make mistakes. Like George Bridge had, I know he's just back from injury, had some pretty terrible hands. So Mitch Hunt was quite happily uh, exploiting some of that rust. And uh, yeah, overall, we did pretty well. Um, oh my goodness. Uh, Umanga Jensen. Because apparently I'm just a Highlanders fanboy this week. What can you say? Uh, it's not often teams beat the Crusaders. Doesn't get any tries or try assists. And I used to just basically pick guys who got tries. Uh, he has 12 runs for 51 meters. Which, especially given the opposition he was up against, is a very, very tidy number. Uh, only beats the one defender as well and doesn't get any clean breaks. So that's amazing numbers. Uh, four passes and an offload. Defensively is maybe a bit of a gap where he misses four tackles and makes four. So again, it's not a perfect outing. But just ball in hand looked a real, a real threat. So um, I'm pretty pleased for him. He was out injured for quite some time. It seemed to be pretty much the whole of last year, wasn't he? So, uh, yeah, pretty good for Pete Umanga Jensen to get a crack. Did I say Pete? Thomas Umanga Jensen to get a crack and um, get a good result. Uh, another youngster. I've gone with uh, Billy Proctor at, at outside center. Now, it's a tough one because he didn't have like a perfect game. But I think a defensive shift... Is probably what I've gone for here. I could have gone for Rico from the Blues. Have I, I've gone with Papalita. Have I haven't even gone for any Blues guys? Um, but I think Rico's only real mark on that game was blitzing. Was it one of the props? Like, he really put the hammer down and exploited a, a gap versus a forward. But otherwise didn't do maybe as much as we might expect. But Proctor, uh, no tries or try assists. But does get five runs for 21 meters. Which is a solid return. Maybe you'd like to see a bit more ball. Uh, has a clean break, has three passes, eight from eight tackles is is the phenomenal part. Like eight from eight tackles for a guy his age is um, is very mature. He does have one turnover conceded, but yeah, thought he played pretty well in the losing effort from the Canes. Uh, another Kane and another guy I'm kind of getting on the fanboy train for uh, is Celesi Reyasi. Looks the most dangerous winger in Super Rugby Aotearoa at the moment, maybe. I know the Crusaders guys, mm, but Reyasi, I think, is doing phenomenally well. And again, no tries or anything this week, but has eight runs for 33 meters. Gets a clean break, beats five defenders. Like, yeah, he's doing an imitation of um, of old school Julian Savia, maybe, who's on the other wing, who had a decent performance as well, but I still prefer Reyasi's one. Uh, four passes and an offload, five tackles made, none missed, which is a great effort as well. Uh, does concede one turnover, but overall, Rayasi is really putting his hand up this year. Uh, I've also put Mark Talia from the Blues. Now, he does get a try, a proper winger's try. Where all he has to do is go and finish it. Uh, so, a good effort from him. And again, it's nothing kind of that spectacular, but just doing his core role well as a winger. Doesn't have to be as flashy as anything but you know seven runs 40 meters is a good return has two clean breaks and a defender beaten good return two passes and offload he's not there to pass it he's there to, to run fast and to, to beat defenders as much as he can uh but still has an offload which is nice uh six out of seven tackles is like a bonus because it's not every winger that gets those kind of defensive numbers right it's often hard defending out on the wings when you're often in awkward situations does have two turnovers conceded which can be a bit uh, of a black mark, but overall, pretty good. And the last one uh, is another Highlander. This must be the most Highlanders I've ever had on the board. 
at one time. But I've gone with Connor Gard and Bashup. I mean, he got taken out pretty early, didn't he? And then his team got penalised for it. Uh, I should give a quick shout-out to Scott Gregory for that tackle on Ethan Blackadder and Ethan Blackadder for his work rate during this game as well. If Ethan Blackadder scores that try over Scott Gregory, I'd probably put him in for instead of Frizzell. But anyway, uh, Connor Garden Bashup gets a try. Real quick bit of thinking for him to pounce on that loose ball. Uh, he has 10 runs for 91 run meters as a heck of a, heck of a finish. Uh, one clean break, two defenders beaten. He has five passes and an offload. Tackling count is poor. It's four missed, two made. But overall, I think good experience for him in this week as well. Man, that's a lot of Highlanders. I hadn't realized. I just I just pick him. I don't I don't count him. But as I read the names out, I realized um, that's quite a few Highlanders. But anyway, uh, you guys let me know your thoughts. Who else might you have had in the team of the week? Who would you have maybe cut? Some guys, it's hard as well because the numbers maybe don't do them justice. Like... Um, Tyrell Lomax's numbers actually look pretty good on paper, but I don't think he had the best of his games uh, at the weekend as well. But anyway, you guys have any thoughts, and um, I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.